Welcome to Solar Education Project's Makerspace. Today, we're going to show you step-by-step -step directions for making this large Copenhagen oven that we've nicknamed The Beast. Okay, the first step is to prepare our poster boards, and we're going to have four sheets of poster board, and each one needs to be 22 by 22 inch square. Because the standard poster board is 28 by 22, we're going to have to trim off six inches of poster board. We're going to use our ruler and from the edge measure in six inches, make a mark. Move it down a bit, do the same thing. Measure in six inches, make a mark. And we're going to connect those two marks. And we trim off this excess six inch strip and we'll be left with a 22 by 22 inch square. Okay, now we have to choose a reflective material to glue or apply to each of the four pieces of poster board that we've prepared. You have some choices. Um, this is self-stick vinyl that you can get at sign shops and craft stores, but it's a little bit expensive. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money making your oven, you could also purchase aluminum foil. And just remember that there's a dull side to the foil and there's a more shiny side and this is the side that you want to use. A very inexpensive um, choice is to upcycle materials that might go into the trash. If you've ever looked on the inside of snack bags, you'll see that some of them have a, a wonderful reflective interior. Take this one and we've got some glue. You can either use regular white glue um, or wood glue with a few drops of water. And I've got a sponge brush that I'm going to use to apply it to my poster board. So don't worry about getting it perfectly on the edge. You can trim those. Do the same thing with our piece of aluminum foil. Shiny side up. Smooth it out. And the last option was the reflective vinyl, which is self-stick. And you peel this off, and this will stick right to, to your poster board. Okay, so we've foiled all four of our panels, and then the next step is to turn the panel over. And we're going to create the base of our panel oven where the cooking pot will rest. To do that, I'm going to choose a corner, and I'm going to measure from the corner down seven and a half inches. I'll do that on that side, and then I'll do it again on this side. Okay, now I take my ruler and I connect those two marks. I'm going to now turn over and fold inward and make a nice crease. You can see once we've brought those four corners together, it forms a square that when I flip this over will be the base of, uh, of your cooking oven and that's where your pot will sit. So there are different ways to join this together. Uh, one way that I do sometimes is to um, take those scraps that I had and make a square that fits that shape. And then I glue and attach the square and then that acts as kind of a, a paper tape to hold them together. And you have to let that dry for a while. But what we're gonna do today is to simply attach it using duct tape and we're going to connect from one end to the other connecting from one end to the other and we'll be able to flip this over and bring it up into that cone shape so that we can cook i like to do this i like to mark one of them as the back or the rear panel and now i'm going to take my clips and just show you how easily this clips together to start forming a nice cone shape that will be reflecting light into your cooking space. And you do the same thing for the other panels. To better understand how solar cooking works, we use uh, what we call the DARE method. And the word DARE, D-A-R-E, represents four concepts that are important to solar cooking. The D is direct and you can see 
we've uh, added all this reflective material so that we can capture extra sunlight and direct it into the cooking space. The A in DARE is absorb. We have black cookware that we use in solar cooking. The color black absorbs all the wavelengths of visible light and converts it to heat energy. And it's that heat energy that then cooks the food inside the cooking pans. The R in DARE is retain. Because once you've got that heat, you have to find a way to keep it trapped in your cooking space. And there are a number of ways to do that. You can use a reusable oven bag, place your pan in the oven bag, close it up, and that will retain the heat. Or you can use um, Pyrex bowls, inverted, place your cooking pan inside the bowl, and another one on top and that also retains the heat. And another way is to use a polycarbonate sleeve in the shape of the pan that you slide the pan down into and that retains the heat as well as the lid on top. And this is a really good setup, both of these, because it raises the pot up off the base a little bit and that's much more efficient for solar cooking in this panel oven. And what about the E? Well, the E could be all sorts of things. Because you're cooking, of course, E is eat. You can eat delicious, wonderful, healthy food with solar cooking. We're outside, and I'm gonna talk just for a minute about how you align your Copenhagen to the sun. Okay, this is the rear panel. You face that directly to the sun. If the sun is high in the sky, you bring all the panels up to form a nice cone shape and get as much reflectivity as you can into the cooking space. But this afternoon, we're working with a low sun, so, so I can lower them pretty much all the way down, and that allows the sun to hit the pot directly and also receive the reflection from the, the panel surrounding it on the sides and the back. Thank you for joining us today for our Makerspace, where we made the Copenhagen Beast. Um, if you're interested in this oven, uh, please know that it doesn't have to be this big. The original Copenhagen by Sharon Clausen has 15 inch panels, and we've also made a kids version with 11 inch panels. Each one is perfectly functional and able to cook food. We have these and many other designs that you can access at our website, gdsnonprofit.org, and click on Solar Education Project. And happy solar cooking. Bye bye.